Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, a show dedicated to helping men grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the TuneIn radio app. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zakowski. Today, we are joined by Bill Donahue of the Theology of the Body Institute to discuss the importance of St. John Paul the Great's Theology of the Body and its role in the lives of men today. This is one of the greatest theological works of our time, and Bill will be with us in five minutes to unpack it and teach us how to learn from it. Father Zach, would you please open us up in a word of prayer? Absolutely, Joe. It's good to be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of being alive today, the gift of serving you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us that We may know your truth, know your wisdom, know your compassion, know your mercy. And we ask all these things through the intercession of Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frazzati as we pray. Hail Mary, full full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for for us sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, you are very well versed in the theology of the body. For our listeners who don't know, you you studied at the Theology of the Body Institute. Uh, You teach it at Dowling Catholic High School here in Des Moines. It seems to be kind of a central part of your ministry. Just from talking with you, I know it's very important to you. Why is this such an important work? It really is a a kind of a, George Weigel described it as a kind of a ticking theological time bomb that that is kind of set to go off here in, in the new millennium. And I think that we are just kind of discovering as a church, really just starting to unpack it. You know, this is some, this is such a great inspired work of John Paul II that I think we're going to be unpacking it for 500 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of, we're just scratching the surface. And just to remember that when John Paul II wrote this, you know, wrote in front of the blessed sacrament, you know, so he wrote it with the mind of the church, which is the mind of Jesus, uh, wrote it to bring people to the truth about their body and the goodness of being created with a body, goodness of our soul, and the greatness of God's plan for men and women. Well, luckily we have people to help us unpack it, because I think it would take me 500 years to read it. Uh, It's very dense, but it's it's filled with just tremendous insights uh, on on our bodies, on our uh, our sexuality in general. Uh, And so I'm excited to dive into this topic. But what do you think in your time studying it are the three... Most important things to take out of it today. Oh, three. Uh, I have to limit it to three. Well, we only have three. <laughs> I think uh, the first word that comes to mind, or first two words, is self-gift. This idea that Christ on the cross gives Himself totally as a gift to all of us, and gives us an example, especially as men, of what it means to be a, a husband, uh, to be a spouse. That means that we pour our life out, that we pour ourselves out for for our bride. And so I think that's really important, that idea of self-gift. Another uh, idea is the four words that describe marriage, which is uh, we come into marriage freely, totally, faithfully, and fruitfully. You know, so those are four words that are important to theology of the body, Uh, free, total, faithful, fruitful. And then I think uh, thirdly, just this idea that sex and the body are really, they're sacraments that point to little less sacraments that point us to heaven. You know, this idea that these just are a preview or pointing to something greater, which is our union with God in heaven. So it's just a very beautiful teaching. And uh, I think the important thing is just to kind of dive in. And we're going to talk to Bill in a few minutes about some of the ways we can dive into this rich theological uh, work that that John Paul's given us. Yeah, we're going to head to that short short break right now. And when we return, Bill Donahue will be with us. So stick around and we'll be right back. My help comes from you. You're right here putting me through. You carry my weakness, my sickness, my brokenness. Thanks for listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting on 1150 AM. 88.5 FM and 94.5 FM, 
heard around the world streaming online on iowacatholicradio.com and on smartphones everywhere on the TuneIn Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zach Kautsky, and today we are excited to be joined by Bill Donahue. Bill Donahue is the Theology of the Body Institute's Curriculum Specialist and Spokesperson for the 2016 International Theology of the Body Congress coming to the Ontario Convention Center in September in, in Southern California. Bill is an international speaker and certification program instructor. Uh, he's worked in the fields of mission, evangelization, and education, specializing in visual arts, philosophy, and systematic theology. Bill lives in outside of Philadelphia with his wife and four children. And a little known fact about Bill, he can juggle almost any three objects. Yeah, something I cannot do. <laughs> Not even close. I tried for during my childhood, and it went really poorly. So, Bill... Welcome to the show. Uh, we are, again, we're really excited to have you. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. And, and today, this is a, t- a topic that I know Father Zach has spent uh, many hours studying. He's, uh, he's become a scholar on the theology of the body, so this is a conversation that, that needs to happen. And the topic of today's discussion is being a Catholic man in today's culture through the lens of the theology of the body. So before we get too deep into the theology body, can you explain to our listeners who might not be too familiar with it what exactly the theology of the body is? Sure, Joe, and Father Zach, thanks again for having me on. I, um, I've been studying seriously this teaching for 16 years, and I feel like I'm, I'm just starting to get it. So let that be stated in the very beginning. This is a rich, beautiful teaching that is, in a sense, a, a compendium of the entire Catholic faith. The theology of the body is synonymous with Catholicism, Christianity, the Gospel. Uh, my microwave version of Theology of the Body, I would say that the Theology of the Body is where the invisible, mysterious love of God becomes visible, tangible, incarnational through uh, the physical, through man and woman. Right? God uses all of creation as a kind of sacramental sign to show us his, his power, his delicacy, his beauty, his strength, his wonders. And then all of that, that sacramental sign that points us to God, culminates in the man and the woman. In the one flesh union, St. John Paul II says, we see clearly uh, the most intimate image of God possible on earth. In love, two becoming one flesh, bringing forth a third, is a mini trinity in this world. We see the image of God in the communion of man and woman. It's a theology of the body. And, and obviously Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul, was the, was the person who came up with the, the writings of the theology of the body. And this happened in, you correct me, it's late it's 70s and 80s, correct, Father? That's right. So he, yeah. he began, he wrote the, the work first as a cardinal from 1974 to 1978. When yep. he was elected to the papacy, he had a real uh, inspiration from God to teach it. So from 1979 to 1984, he delivered what he had written yeah. as a book in little pieces. And so now we get to unpack it for the next few millennia. Uh, it sounds like <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> what we're going to be doing. At least, at <laughs> least. And you know, just real quick, it's, it's, it's a new articulation or kind of a fresh upload of what Christianity has always taught going all the way back to Genesis. So this is uh, a kind of, a, again, re-articulation of what the faith is all about. It seems uh, one of the images that really has been helpful to me is just to see the, the theology of the body as sort of a maybe a picture frame around all of history or all of salvation history that it touches every area, whether it's scripture, whether it's uh, anthropology, you know, whatever area, it, it kind of has a connection to everything. You know, it's a, it's a, a lens maybe uh, through which we can look at our faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would agree with that, Father Zach. It's a, uh... You know, just as a man, as a husband, as a father, as an artist, as a lover of beauty, uh, literature, poetry, every single thing I look at from my own, you know, intake of of God's revelation is definitely enhanced and made more beautiful, more powerful through the theology of the body. It, It literally does touch on every aspect of life. And George Weigel, the papal biographer, said as much. He said, this thing's going to go off. It's going to touch every major theme of the creed. And again, be that way that we look upon the world, which was God's plan from the beginning. It's a sacramental vision. I think that's important because I think the understanding among many Catholics is that it's just Catholic sex ed or, mm. uh, or just simply marriage prep. And it just is so much deeper than that. It really is kind of that, that sacramental vision for 
mm. the entirety of our life. You know, the, yeah, I think we're starting. Life. I think you're right. I think we're starting to get that sense. You know, early on, Christopher West has been a, really a leading voice for starting to uh, first off discover in the mid '90s this teaching from Saint John Paul II, which had right. kind of been academically viewed and put on a shelf, but he mm-hmm. he made it more uh, sort of touchable from the pew, from the person in the pew. Early on, I think it was kind of that vision, like, well, this is for married people. This is about sex, right? right? Then you start to realize, well, what is sex about? Sex, sexuality is human life. It's every single person, married, single, celibate. Every single man and woman has something to learn from this beautiful teaching. I've You're- had the opportunity uh, a few times to be out at the, the Theology of the Body Institute outside of uh, Philadelphia, and actually you were my instructor for my first uh, head and heart course several years my ago. My privilege. Yeah. My privilege, um, Father Zach. <laughs> and what was amazing to me is, you know, you have these five-day courses uh, there, and to see the different vocations there at the body of Christ, to see consecrated sisters, to see seminarians, many, many married people and single people, priests, that was just beautiful to see that kind of the body of Christ working together, seeing their own unique living out of the theology of the body that that they're called to make a, a gift of self. I thought that was that that's really yeah. always stuck out to me about yeah, those courses. That's that's been our experience in the twelve coming on our twelfth year of existence as an institute and that's the mainstay is these retreat courses we offer. And every single one seems to contain every single vocation. It's like a microcosm of the entire church. And we've had more and more Protestant uh, students coming in. So we've got um, uh, the diversity of the faith there, too. And, yeah, everyone seems to be there, every age, every state of life. And uh, it's just such a gift to, to see everyone's different perspective as they come into this, the oneness of this teaching. You're listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, and today we are joined by Bill Donahue. And we are discussing the topic of being a Catholic man in today's culture through the lens of the theology of the body. As a beginner, Bill, uh, I have tried to read the actual work of the Theology of the Body. Uh, I'm not very smart. Okay, let me go ahead and say this. I am not a theologian. How can I, as a lay person with uh, you know, my father and a husband, how can I possibly start diving into this? Are there, are there references, materials yes. that can allow me not have to not have to read the, the original text? Joe, I'm so glad you said that because honestly, and myself, you know, I have a master's in systematic theology. I've been, you know, studying this for years and years. It took me years to read John Paul's original catechesis. It is dense. It is philosophically, theologically very, very rich. So, uh, yeah, you're not alone there, Joe. Not alone uh, uh, by any stretch. There's a ton of great resources, and um, I would recommend right off the bat, you know, uh, Theology of the Body for Beginners by Christopher West. And a great little book, Theology of the Body, made simple by Father Anthony Percy. He's an Australian priest. And there's others. You know, there's more and more. But I think you need kind of a little appetizer, you know, that it's kind of like that bacon-wrapped shrimp that's like, oh, this is so good. You that, know? That's my meal. I'm so glad you mentioned that's bacon. My, that's oh, my yeah. meal right there. I just eat a thousand <laughs> of those. I know. And I said it on a Friday. Now I'm really hungry for bacon. <laughs> and we're in Iowa, so that's all we eat. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you taste little books like that, you know, here's another one by Mary Healy called Men and Women Are from Eden. That's a great one. Great, great great book by Mary Healy. Those little intros give you a good overall sense of where the teaching's going, what it's about, the structure of it, and then you're ready to kind of go deeper. Our courses themselves, you know, we pull from the primary source, Theology of the Body Catechesis, but we do it in little chunks. And Father Zach, you know from the course that you took, right, that we, we need to sit with a quote, whoa, okay, let's pray about this, let's... Let's illuminate it through maybe um, a piece of music or a work of sacred art to give ourselves a right brain, left brain experience of it, and then go back in. It, it's something that I think for most has to be taken in small, bite-sized pieces. And we have the rest of our lives to, to unpack this teaching. Well, and I think that's so important as we kind of dive into the theology of the body, that it's not just an academic pursuit. It's not just just merely the head. It's also the heart. It's kind of a both and and... and Different people may overemphasize, you know, the heart in the church or the head, but it's really, and that's a challenge, I think, to to integrate that beautiful teaching of John Paul into both our head and, and our heart and to see yeah. how, how does this touch my life and how, what does this mean to me? You, just, you just nailed it. You absolutely nailed it, Father Zach. I mean, this, there's something for everyone here. There is something for the academic, for the intellectual, the philosopher. There's something also for the, you know, the the blue-collar, you know, worker, the housewife. There's something for everybody. 
And I think the main thing for everybody, though, is the heart. This head knowledge is mind-blowing. It's overwhelming. It's incredible. But if it doesn't trickle down and hit your personal life, your heart, your encounter with Jesus, then, you know, our, our week's retreat is in vain. Right? And John Paul's made, made just such a statement that this has to encounter the heart. That's where God is. That's where God encounters you in your inner sanctum. And I hope, you know, that's why we couch this as a week-long retreat course. We have, as you know, Father Zach, from attending it, we have the presence of the Blessed Sacrament all week long. Right. Uh, we have a prayer team that's interceding for everyone. We have opportunities for daily Mass, for confession, adoration. That's the strength of these uh, immersions in the theology of the body. And we call them the head and heart immersion. It's really a transformation in Christ and in grace. You're listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Uh, today we're joined by Bill Donahue, and we are discussing the topic of being a Catholic man in today's culture through the lens of the theology of the body. Bill, for uh, an average man uh, today, uh, two questions. What does the theology of the body mean to me in my marriage, in my relationship with my spouse, and then B, what does it mean for me with my relationship with my children? Oh, good one. You know, and I'm right there with you, Joe. Again, as a husband and a father uh, of four little ones, <clears throat> I was lucky enough to kind of rediscover uh, in the year 2000 this teaching. And at that moment, that year, I actually met my future wife. So studying theology of the body more in depth and also studying my wife was just this great kind of dance that we're going together. By the way, I'm still fumbling through that dance. I'm yes. doing my best. <laughs> yes. I'm sure I tend it's all... to fall down a lot in my dance. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. i got to tie my shoes. You know, I just keep tripping over myself. But um, I think, you know, what it says to me is, well, woman, here's the thing. You get this whole rekindled sense of wonder at what woman is, what God meant to express to the universe when he created the greatest gift, woman, right? John Paul says that, Woman is the icon of all humanity. Woman is God's masterpiece. And I just, you know, growing into that, as a husband and a father, I have this sense of stewardship, of reverence for my wife, just a sense of, of um, awe, really, that she is this kind of representation of the tabernacle of life, right? The tabernacle of the Most High. So as a man, I get my identity through studying theology of the body. I figure out who I am, right? I'm a guardian, I'm a protector, I'm a steward, um, and in a certain sense, that royal priesthood, too, of this tabernacle. So, I mean, it's, it's so humbling, it's so incredible. And then when the life comes, when you have these children coming along, you realize, too, that you're called to be mentor, to be guardian, to be protector. And uh, it's, it's a weight of glory, for sure, on my shoulders. And again, I, I stumble and fall sometimes, but I get so inspired by this teaching to try to really fully live as man. And at the end of the day, that means that I become a gift through my, the service of my heart, and I see my wife, my children, everybody as gift. That's the great dance, it's this giftedness. One of the other things I think is, is beneficial to us as fathers is the ability for theology of the body, the more we study it and get to learn it, is to teach our children the why and the yes to our sexuality, right? Instead of always yeah. telling them the no and the stay away from this, theology of the body allows us as parents to give them the yes and the beauty, and because that's what they're longing for, right? Children are longing for beauty. They're longing for truth. And this document, and then obviously everything that we're pulling out of it, uh, allows us the ability to have those conversations with our children, more so than we have in the past. That's right. Praise God, right? Because you know, I think in the past, say our parents or grandparents' uh, generations, it was kind of assumed, and there was a help from society that there was a great gift and mystery to sexuality, but it wasn't talked about. Today, we've gone to the other extreme. It's talked about everywhere. So if a Catholic parent um, sort of defaults to something that worked in 1930 or 40, um, the culture quickly fills in the vacuum. So we can't not talk about it. And we have to talk about it, as you said, not in a legalistic or negative way, but start with wonder. When do you start teaching theology of the body? When they're six months old. You know, when mm -hmm. little babies start to explore the mystery of their body, and, you, and it's a gift, and you call them to become this gift. And yes, if you marinate in that for 18 years, if a kid marinates in the fact that they are a gift, their sexuality is a sign and a gift of God in the world, called to communion, you know, you're, you're ready. If you've been soaking in that beautiful, positive teaching for that long, you're ready to encounter the world, even in its brokenness. Absolutely. And Bill, as a priest, I've found the I was on the kind of the trial priest course uh, where we tr kind of tried out a 
new priest course, uh, just exclusively for, for priests to help them to live their fatherhood um, in a very kind of a parallel way to the way that the dads are are receiving the the theology of the body. And could you talk a little bit about the priest program? Um, yeah. which is kind of still relatively new, a couple of years old now. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. And, you know, I'm glad you're saying that, Father Zach, because they go hand in hand. Here, you know, here I am, a husband and father with Joe, husband and father, and you too, Father Zach, are absolutely husband and father. And that's one of the things about this clergy program. So right now we're actually in the stages of developing the third piece. It's three courses, priestly identity and theology of the body, priestly prayer, and priestly mission. So the mission ones we're working on right now. And really, it helps to rekindle a sense of what celibacy is all about for uh, for priests. And right. it's not, as the culture sees it, as this negative, yeah. right? Like, oh, you know, thank you for your sacrifice. Right. You're giving up so much. <laughs> and it's, you know, as if marriage... How do you do it? I don't know sacrifice. how you do it, Father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you're raising five kids and you're stressed out. Like, it's <laughs> everywhere, the call to fatherhood, the call to sacrifice is present. So a priest going through the... the the uh, clergy enrichment program gets the sense that, yes, my masculinity, my fatherhood is just as real and in a certain sense fuller through my priesthood. Right? My biological fatherhood, my fatherhood um, in my family, it's meant to reach spiritual fatherhood. Joe, same for you. And, you know, Father Zach, you, so you're that icon for us. You can inspire us to what true fatherhood looks like. Conversely, Joe and I, when you look at us and our spouse and our children, you can see, too, the intimacy of family life that you're called to as well as a pastor. You're not an administrator, right? You're a father first. So the clergy enrichment program is all about that. Uh, and we've just gotten great results, positive feedback from it, saying like, wow, I finally get what celibacy is. It's, it's spousal love directed toward the Father, directed toward Christ, the Bridegroom, and I get my priesthood now. We hear that over and over again. Bill, we got to take off here in a sec, but I want to ask you real quick, can you give us a quick plug for the upcoming Theology of the Body Congress and a, a website we can follow you at? Oh, absolutely, and thanks for that. So, tobcongress.com. Uh, we've had a few over the years. We're going to have one in Southern California this September 23rd to the 25th. It's going to be in Ontario, California. Very excited about it, being a New Jersey East Coast boy <laughs> myself. So uh, the Congress gathers speakers from all over the country, all over the world, and we're going to have a wonderful couple days uh, in Ontario pondering the message of Theology of the Body for a variety of topics and talks for everybody under the sun. So we hope you can join us. The website, again, is tobcongress.com. Bill, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bill. Up next, we're going to have your 99-second homily with Father Zach. So stick around, and we will be right back. My help comes from you. You're right here, pulling me through. You carry my weakness, my sickness. My Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zach Kouchki. We just had a great conversation with Bill Donahue on the importance of the theology of the body in the lives of men today. Now for your 99 second homily with Father Zach. Today's reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 7. And St. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And this is one of my favorite scripture passages. And really what, uh, what he's saying, in other words, is we need to follow Jesus. You know, that our whole life is a race. Our whole life is really a race to the finish, the finish line being heaven. Not just a, not merely a, a finish line on a track, but truly it's union with God in heaven. And so today as we, uh, we look around the world and we see all the distortions, all the lies, all the wounds that the sexual revolution has, has caused that, that has inflicted on us, especially on women, I think it's really, really important for us just to be strong, uh, take strength in the Lord from the sacraments, and our brothers, and keep fighting that good fight, running that race, uh, because we know that today more than ever, the mission of the church really is to follow those words. The mission of the church really requires that we need we need men of risk and sacrifice to be heroes. We need heroes in this race, and so uh, so we ask for especially Saint Paul uh, for his intercession as we we run this race. And you know, Saint Paul also said that. I don't know why I commit the sins I do. 
you know. So he he got frustrated at certain times with his own sinfulness, and he didn't understand why he just kept committing the same sins over and over again. And so that might be helpful to us, just that this great saint of the church, uh, who we know had the wor- you know the worst past, he was persecuting Christians, by God's grace uh, was brought to, to sainthood, uh, to be one of the greatest teachers and evangelists of the faith. And this, this writing from St. Paul in relationship to the theology of the body that we're talking about today the, the, the sexual teaching of the church is not easy, and we've always had it as a very difficult teaching, and many people leave the church because of it. Uh, Jesus also said that you have to pick up your cross and follow me. He never said that it's going to be this easy waltz through life, and St. Paul is saying it's a race. you got to run the race with persistence. So part of what, what John Paul has done, and we talked about this previously, is given us the why we are doing what we're doing, why our body is so special, and why the sexual teachings of the church are correct. It's not a no, it's a yes. But we have, we have to look to the saints. We have to look to, to St. Paul and the words of St. Paul and the words of Jesus to understand that this is not going to be easy, but the reward for doing it uh, in your own personal life, my gosh, the fruits of it. When I talk about the, to the Dowling High Schoolers, I say, listen, if you follow the church's teaching, you will have a happier life. Period. Yeah, it's happy. Happy. That's the goal: happiness with God in heaven forever. And even we can experience that happiness here on earth because, you know, the people that are living these teachings, it's a challenge, but there is true joy and happiness there, even in that struggle. Yep. Well, thanks again for joining us today on Man Up on IO Catholic Radio for Father Zach Kautsky. I am Joe Stopulis. Time to man up.